Probably the hottest topic on the energy frontier of particle physics is the search for the Higgs boson. For those of you who haven't heard about it, the Higgs boson is a proposed particle that might be the thing that gives subatomic particles their mass. A very common question I encounter when I speak to the public is, if you don't know if it even exists, just how do you go about looking for a Higgs boson? So I thought that I'd explain it to you. Even though we don't know which theory governs the behavior of Higgs bosons, or if they even exist at all, we understand very well what the standard model predicts about the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is predicted to be unstable and to decay in a tiny fraction of a second into exactly two lighter daughter particles. You should remember that since we don't know the mass of the Higgs boson, if it exists at all, we physicists must explore a broad range of possible masses and also the many ways in which it can decay. It turns out that these two factors are interrelated. So let's take a look at this graphic here. The Higgs boson is on the left, while there are five other particles arranged in a column on the right. They are the most common particles into which the Higgs boson can decay. Between them are some bars. The thickness of the bar represents the probability that the Higgs boson will decay into that particle. For instance, we see in this example that there is a 51% chance that a Higgs boson will decay into a pair of bottom quarks with a 30% chance that it will decay into a pair of W bosons. There is a much smaller chance that an individual Higgs boson will decay into a pair of Z bosons or tau leptons and a negligible chance that it will decay into top quarks. So let me step out of this frame and we can get a better understanding. At the top, we see a scale of possible masses of the Higgs boson ranging from 100 to 500 times heavier than a proton. Since I don't know the mass of the Higgs boson, I can pick a mass and see how the Higgs boson will decay. Then I can design my experiment to look for those kind of particles. For instance, if the mass is 100, we see that the Higgs boson will decay most likely into bottom quarks with a smaller chance of tau leptons. The W boson is very unlikely. As I move the slider bar to a mass of about 130, we see the Higgs boson will decay into bottom quarks and W bosons with similar probability, and now there is some chance for it to decay into Z bosons. As I raise the mass to about 160, we see that the Higgs boson will decay nearly entirely into W bosons. Above that mass, the ways in which the Higgs boson decays continues to change and eventually even includes a possible decay into top quarks. This is how we search for Higgs bosons. We pick a mass we want to study and find out how Higgs bosons of that mass are likely to decay. Then we search for those kind of particles to see if there are more there than theory can predict without the Higgs boson. There are more ways the Higgs boson can decay than the five we just saw, including a very rare but extremely useful one in which the Higgs boson decays into two photons. So we've been looking for the Higgs boson for a while now. What have we learned? Well, we see right here the status as of the fall of 2011. As I describe what you see here, keep in mind that the situation is evolving very rapidly. By the time you watch this video, the detailed numbers will likely have changed. Using the methods that I've described here, previous studies have ruled out some possible values of the Higgs boson mass, as shown by the pink regions. For instance, we know the Higgs boson can't have a mass below about 115. These experiments have also excluded masses above about 145. This means the most likely range for the Higgs boson is somewhere between 115 and 145. So what will the future bring? Ongoing analysis of data taken at Fermilab and CERN will further narrow the range of possible masses. For instance, by the time you see this, it may be that we have also ruled out the range of 140 to 145 or, or even more. And of course, the goal is to find the Higgs boson if it exists. Scientists continue to refine their strategies to search for the Higgs boson in the mass range where it still could be. These are exciting times in the world of particle physics. We will either soon find the Higgs boson or entirely kill the theory. The first will further confirm the standard model and provide insights on the origins of subatomic mass. If we kill the theory entirely, this is even more exciting, as we'll have to totally rethink our theories. Discovering that the standard model is wrong is perhaps the most fascinating possibility of all. It's also important to remember that I've been talking about the Higgs boson predicted by the standard model. If we discover new physics, all bets are off. Scientists are studying those possibilities as well. No matter what, the near future will bring us an answer. So what are we going to find? 
beats me. This is the nature of scientific research. We don't know what the outcome will be. As Albert Einstein is reported to have said, if we knew what the outcome would be, it wouldn't be called research. Now would it? Wait a minute. I'm hearing something. Apparently, ladies and gentlemen, we have some late-breaking news. New measurements using even more data have ruled out an even larger possible range of masses of the Higgs boson. Further, the experiments are studying carefully some very interesting hints in the remaining range. The data is certainly not conclusive yet, and nobody is claiming a discovery, but these hints are certainly worth keeping an eye on. I told you that this was a fast-changing situation. The updates just keep coming. It won't be long before the Higgs boson is discovered, or we'll discover that it's not there. This means the standard model is broken and needs fixing. Either way, we'll soon know something new. Hold on, this is going to be a wild ride.